So good morning, everyone. So welcome to another session on functions. Uh, in this session, we are going to talk about periodic functions. Periodic functions. Not a new concept for us. We have been already introduced to trigonometry in class 11th, where we saw periodic functions, uh, trigonometric functions, which were actually periodic. Right? So all the trigonometric functions, standard functions that we had learned in class 11, they were all periodic. So how do you define a periodic function? So a function, let's say defined from x to y, is said to be periodic. This function is said to be periodic. Is said to be periodic. Okay. If there exists if there exists a positive real number t, if there exists a positive real number t such that such that f of x plus t is equal to f of x for all x belonging to the domain of the function for all x belonging to the domain of the function. Okay. And this quantity t is called the period of the function. And this quantity t is called the period of the function. It's called the period of the function. Please do not use the word time period. It is not a time period. Had your variable been uh, the, the variable of time, then yes, then it will become a time period. But in maths, we just call it as a period. Now, a few things to be very uh, carefully observed over here. One is your t should be a positive real number. Okay. That means it cannot be zero also. Because if it is zero, then every function in this world will become periodic. Okay. Second thing is, this relation must hold true for the same t for all value of x in the domain of the function. So these are the two things that we need to watch out for. Now, why am I saying for all x belonging to the domain of the function? See, if you look at sine x function, if you look at sine x function, if I just focus on one single value, let's say zero, let's say I want to see when does sine x become a zero? So of course it becomes a zero at zero, it becomes a zero at pi, it becomes a zero at two pi, it becomes a zero at three pi. So for all n pi, the function sine x becomes zero. Does that mean the period of sine x is pi? Does that mean the period of sine x is pi? The answer is no, because it must satisfy the same relation of repetition of the value must satisfy for all values of x in the domain. For example, if I take, if I take a value half, half comes from 30 degree. Okay. Yeah. Or if I take a value, let's say one, which comes from 90 degree. Now I do not get a value of one again when I increase the value of x by pi. So if I, if I move to three pi by two, I'll not get a value of one. In fact, I'll get a value of minus one. Okay. So the only value that I'll, the next value that I get here is when I take it to five pi by two, then only I'll get this one back. So in this case, the gap becomes two pi, right? Now, can I say two pi is the period? Yes. If you take any value of X, the sin x value will get repeated if you change your x by a value of 2 pi, whether in the forward direction or in the backward direction. Okay. Now, what is period? Period basically is the value for which the function is repeating itself for every value of x in the domain of the function. In this case, you saw 2 pi could be a period. In fact, 4 pi could also be a period. 6 pi could also be a period. All 2k pi could be a period. Are you getting my point? Now, there is something called fundamental period. So, what is the fundamental period? 
So in this case, you can say 2 pi is the period. I'll come to fundamental period. So this is your period. Okay. What's the fundamental period? Fundamental period is the smallest or the least value of t for which the function occurs or for which the function repeats itself. Okay. So the least value of, of t, the least value of t such that, such that f of x plus t is equal to f of x for all x belonging to the domain of the function. Okay. And of course, t should be a real positive number. Okay. So it is the least value of t. So yes, 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, 8 pi, 10 pi, 12 pi, etc. They will all be period of sin x. But the least of them is 2 pi. So 2 pi will be the fundamental period. Okay. Many a times the word fundamental may not be used. They will just use the word period for it. Okay. Any questions here? So many a times the word fundamental, I'll write it down. Note, note any fundamental word may not be used. Word may not be used sometimes. Okay. So I have a doubt. Yes, sir, Radeep, tell me. So can you drag a little bit? I had to ask something there. Yeah. Here? That's a little bit. Yes, sir. So what is that inverted E? That if E inverted E is there exists. There okay. exists. It is a symbol for there exists. Okay, sir. Okay. So I'll give you a list of some periodic functions that uh, you'll be coming across in mathematics. Okay. Uh, but these are the basic ones. These are the basic ones. There'll be uh, complicated questions given to you, which, in will, which will involve various combination of different types of functions. Okay. So we'll take that, those questions as our problem questions. So let me give you a list of periodic functions. List of standard periodic functions. Okay, so now let me begin with let me begin with the trick functions that we had done in our now when I say period, I mean fundamental period. Okay. If I, if I just use the word period, <coughs> it means fundamental period. Okay. <clears throat> when you talk about sine to the power nx, what do you think is the period of sine to the power nx? So if n is positive, then it will be pi. Okay, let's but say otherwise... n, is, n is a natural number. No, so if, if it's even, then uh, it'll be part. Okay. If it's odd, then it'll be the same. <clears throat> okay, very good. <clears throat> the answer is if n is odd, then the period here would be 2 pi. But if your n is even, your period becomes pi. Okay. I'm sure you have seen. I'll just show you the graph of these functions when you're changing the power. Sorry. Yeah, let's say I talk about sine x. Okay, let me just keep the Yeah, so for sine x, you can see the period is 2 pi. So look at look at the crest difference that is equal to 2 pi. 
even if I make sine cube x, let's say I make a sine cube x, or let me raise it to the power of Yeah. Now the difference doesn't change. Still this difference is equal to 2 pi. Of course there are harmonics introduced in the function. But the difference between uh, the distance of x between two points in the same phase is 2 pi. But if you have a power of let's say an even number. And let me just show you that even if you keep it 5 it will not change. Yeah. Okay. The period is not getting changed. It is still 2 pi. 7. Not getting changed. Still 2 pi. Okay. But the moment I square it, let's say this. As you can see, now the distance between two consecutive crests will become pi. Okay. Now note the difference between the graph of sine square x and mod sine x. Uh, many people make a mistake. Mod sine x graph would be would be having kink kind of a structure like this. It's better to show on the tool itself. Many people draw the same graph. Sine square graph is differentiable everywhere, but not mod x, mod sine x graph. Okay, see the difference. Okay. In the past, I have seen many students they uh, draw the same graph for sine square x and mod sine x. They're not the same, by the way. Yeah. So let me hide this first. And let me increase this power from 2 to 4. Okay. There'll be no change in the, there'll be no change in the period. It'll still remain a pi. Yeah, it's just becoming flatter and flatter here. Okay. So, yes, rightly said by Param, when n is even, it is pi. When n is odd, it remains 2 pi. What about cos to the power nx? Can I say the same trend will be seen for cos as well? So, if n is odd, the period will be 2 pi. And if n is even, the period will be pi. Okay. What about what about tan to the power nx or tan x to the power of n? Yes. What's your opinion about tan to the power nx? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes. What is the answer for this? Is it pi? It's always pi. Yes. It's always pi. Okay. And let me tell you the same will be the story even for the reciprocals. The same will be the story even for their reciprocals. Okay. So let me write it down here. Same will go for cosec to the power nx same will go for c to the power nx and same will go like tan to the power nx even for cot to the power nx okay good what about a constant function what about a constant function is it a periodic function It's not, right? <laughs> it's a periodic function, but its period is not defined. Its period is not defined. Don't say zero because zero cannot be a period. Period is always a positive real number. For constant function, any value of period will work because it is constant throughout. Okay. So it's like a degree of a zero polynomial, which is not defined. It's like the argument of the complex number zero, which is not defined. In the same way, period of a constant function is not defined, but yes, it is the periodic function. 
it is a periodic function okay all right now what about uh, mod of sin x we have just seen mod of sin x graph what is the period pi okay didn't we see that uh, in the geogebra graph yeah this one so as you can see the consecutive crests are coming after a gap of pi in the value of x okay same will go with mod of cos x mod of cos x yeah yeah so again the difference between consecutive crests is pi so fundamental period for mod of cos x will also be pi okay so very interesting questions will be uh, framed on this concept we'll talk about it later all right now what do you think uh, can you give me a function which is algebraic and which is periodic i think one is a constant function i gave but its period is not defined so tell me a function with a defined period and it is algebraic no trigonometry involved the gif the gif function is not periodic but the fractional part function is periodic yes yes fractional part function is periodic okay also called as curly bracket x this is a periodic function with a period of 1 with a period of 1 okay so these are some of the commonly seen functions which are periodic uh we'll talk about we'll talk about a combinations of different types of functions but before that we have to look into the important facts about periodic function some important properties related to periodic function okay have you all copied this down can i move on to the next page yes yes sir important facts about periodic function the first thing is if you know your function f of x has a period of let me write period on the top has a period of t okay <clears throat> then what will be the period if you add a constant or subtract a constant from the function will the period change if yes by how much and if no then of course why it won't change okay the answer is it won't change why why will it not change so because so adding a constant is like shifting the graph up or down so yeah. yes so what is what is basically period period is saying when is the function retaining its previous value again or when is when is it repeating itself again for all values of x in the domain of the function so if you lift the function up or down the repetition still occurs in the same interval of t okay that change will not you know reduce or become more okay what about <clears throat> what about if you multiply a function with a will this change the period no it will be the same will be the same because multiplying a function with a just changes its amplitude it again doesn't change the interval see it's like you know uh, on the x axis nothing is happening if there is a contraction or expansion of the graph along the x axis then of course period is getting changed but if that gap is not changing the span along the x axis is not getting disturbed 
then the function period is going to be the same. What about if I do this? What about if I do this or this? Is it the same? The same. It remains the same. Very good. Okay. So I, I have a question. Yes. So so like um is f dash of x plus t also equal to f dash of x for the periodic function? F dash of x plus t also equal to f of x. Uh, no. That... Uh, no, no, no. The periodicity may change. For example. No, but like but we can say that f of x minus dx is equal to f of x minus dx plus t and x plus dx is also the same. So then the derivative should also be the same, right? Uh, see, let's, let's talk about uh, the, the function fractional part from 0 to 1. Okay. Uh, the period there is 1. Right. Yes, but when you differentiate it, it becomes a constant function. In that case, the period will be undefined. So it may hold true in some case. For example, if you look at sine x, derivative is cos. Both period are same. If you take if you take tan x, derivative is uh, sorry, period is pi. Secant square uh, period is also pi. Okay. In that case, is the same. But it may not remain the same for all the uh, the the trig functions. So I don't think so. Whether that comment can be made that uh, the derivative of the function will also have the same period as the given function. So, like, just from first principles, mm. if I take like f of x plus dx, mm -hmm. and then I know that my derivative is just going to be f of x plus dx minus fx mm. divided by dx. Mm -hmm. So, if I take that entire thing plus t, it will still be the same. f of x plus dx plus t is equal to f of x plus dx. So, it should be the same, right? <clears throat> No, when you add or subtract functions, the period gets changed. For example, uh, let's give you a simple case. Sine square period. What is sine square period? Pi. Pi. Cos square period? Pi. Pi. When you add them, what, do you, what does it become? Constant. Constant. Whose period is undefined. Right? So both functions having a period of pi doesn't mean if you subtract or add them, the period will remain a pi. Right, so those variations can happen. Okay, so. getting the point. But yes, there may be cases when the period is not disturbed. But I think this rule cannot hold for every function in this world. So it's better not to make this as a rule. So, but like, what's wrong with the logic there, though? Yes, that's what I said. Now, add when you are applying first principles, right? In this case, the function remains the same, but uh, <clears throat> so probably when the function is piecewise, it may make a difference. Just like your uh, GIF was sorry, uh, fraction part was piecewise, then it then it was different. For non piecewise continuous function, I think so. This rule will work, whatever you're saying. Okay, so. Okay, but so when that you. That also it implies that all the higher order derivatives will also be the same. Yes, in that case, if one is uh, true, then for all, all the higher order derivatives, the rule will remain the same. Yeah. Okay. Okay, now when you multiply, let's say, x with a b, then what will happen to the period? It will become t divided by b. It will become t divided by b. It actually becomes t divided by mod b. Why? Because if b is a negative quantity, and if you just divide by b, your period will become negative because t is already a positive real number. Okay, so it's always taken as mod b. Why am I writing? Yeah, mod b. 
okay the moment you write a mod you feel like you're writing the magnitude of a vector quantity yeah can somebody prove this why it happens of course uh, there is there are intuitive proofs but i want you to do it mathematically no intuitive proofs you can't give examples like okay c sin x and sin 2x sin x has a period of 2 pi sin 2x has a period of pi are uh, not that kind of a proof i want a mathematical proof for it so i got a way to do it yeah how do you do it so we write f of x plus t is equal to f of x and then we write uh, f of b into x plus t by b okay one second so for this the proof is so okay f first of all t is the fundamental period for f of x so f of x plus t is f of x then what did you do next so f of uh, b into or uh, x plus t by b f of b into x plus t by b x plus t divided by b no so only the t by b yes sir. so just the t will have the divided by b yes sir. so and then we open up the same thing in a different okay. way to express it we express it as f of is equal to f of bx plus t no the same thing okay okay so now let me just write it in a more uh, logical way see let's say if i take if i take the function as f of uh, bx plus c let's say i take a take a function like this okay and let's say i claim that this function's period is this function's period is t dash okay that means f of b x plus t dash plus c should give me f of b x plus c correct so it becomes f of bx plus c plus bt dash is equal to f of bx plus c that means if this function is repeating itself that is f of bx plus c is repeating itself that means bt dash bt dash should be equal to t okay so let's say this function fx is repeating itself after a period of t so this guy f of bx plus c is repeating itself after a period of bt dash so bt dash should be equal to t that means t dash is equal to t by b but we put a mod b in order to make it positive in order to make it positive right so you can you can replace this with a capital x if you want if you can replace this with a capital x if you want okay so f capital x or fx will have a period of t it doesn't matter whether you are changing the name from small x to capital x so bt dash will be equal to the old period that we had which is t so t dash will become t by mod b this is a very useful property it will be applied at so many places so please make a good note of it any questions here okay next thing is basically a question that i would like you to answer uh let's take a question here let's say i have a function i have a function uh which is sum of sin x plus let's say tan x okay what is the period of this function what is the period of this function how will you find the period of sin x plus tan x sin x you know is periodic with 2 pi 
cos uh, tan x you know is periodic with pi so when you add this function what is going to be the period there is a bell which rings after every 2 hours and there is a bell which ring every 1 hour right so let's say both the bells have rang now when will they ring together next that's what it's trying to ask you of course 2 pi or 2 hours isn't it yes correct okay uh, let me make a few changes to the question so the answer here is 2 pi which is very 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 easy to solve because you just had to see which is the higher of the two because they are multiples of each other but what if i say there is a function uh, there is a function which is uh, let's say sin of um, let's say 2 pi x by 3 and there is a tan tan pi x by 2 yeah what is the period of g of x function what is the period of g of x function what will you say Six. Okay. So what did you do? You first found out the period of this one, t one, which was actually two pi divided by mod of two pi by three. Remember the previous property that we did? That will give you a three. Similarly, period of tan pi x by two will be pi divided by mod of pi by two, which will actually give you a two. Then what did you do with the two and a three? Of course, as I can see from your answer, you have taken the LCM of t one and t two. and the answer came out to be 6 very good this answer is correct okay so this is what we normally do now when i say normally means there are some abnormal cases also okay so in general what do we do is in general what do we do is if you have been given a function if you have been given a function which is made up of uh, sum or difference of various functions or even product or quotient of various functions where those sum or difference could not be further reduced are you getting my point see many a times as i said as i said sin square plus cos square if somebody gives you and if you apply the same logic your answer should come out to be pi isn't it right because sin square uh, period is pi cos square period is pi so the lcm of pi and pi will give you a pi in that logic the answer should come out to be pi only but the answer is not pi the answer is actually undefined because sin square plus cos square is further simplified to 1 right even if you take sin x by cos x sin x has a period of 2 pi cos x has a period of 2 pi correct but sin x by cos x becomes tan x whose period is pi okay so when such kind of simplification is happening then in that case this rule which i am giving you will not work okay so let's say if a function f of x has a period of has a period of let's say p by q and a function g of x has a period of let's say r by s r by s okay then then the period of the combination of these two functions the period of the combination of these two uh, uh, functions will be lcm of p by q and r by s okay provided provided there does not exist a positive number k that is very important to write here provided provided there does not exist a positive number k okay less than the given period that you get over here let's say i call this as a t okay less than a t for which or such that such that f of x plus k plus g of x plus k is f of x plus g of x 
Now it is this provided condition which makes the game little tricky. Else it would this chapter would have been a this concept would have been a very straightforward concept because all you would need to do is take an LCM. Acha, by the way, how do you take LCM of fractions? How do you take LCM of fractions? I'm sure everybody knows. So this this condition is not that doesn't make much sense, right? So because like what if just by chance you had one value which aligned? Sorry. So like when when we found the period of sine x, like let's say I took sine of pi by six. Uh -huh. Sine pi by six is equal to sine pi minus pi by six. So in this case, like if you had something of that sort where just by chance two things just came out to be the same even though it's not in one period then it'll break down there i i i could not follow you can you just repeat your example once again so that example is for one function i can't think of one involving two functions but like like let's say i had sine x yeah and I say that the period is uh pi and now I take sine pi by six, and then I find that sine pi minus pi by six is also equal to sine pi by six. So then I can say that uh, that value is like two. So pi is does it does it hold true for all values of x in the domain, or for some certain values? If it holds for certain values, it's an equation kind of a thing, which is which will which cannot be called as a period. Period should hold for all values of x in the domain of that function. That same interval change should bring the result for no matter what value of x you are looking at. Are you getting my point here? Have I am I able to answer the question that you you are trying to ask me? Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I thought that even if you found one example, then you no, can... no, no, no. Okay, fine. One example, two examples, even hundred examples. Will not work. It should work for all values of x in the domain of the function. That's why I categorically underlined that word for all x because people think that even for few of it, it's uh, true. Then it will be true for everything. No. Okay. So we will take a lot of questions where such anomalies will be seen, where such anomalies will be seen. Okay. And I'll tell you why those anomalies are seen for those examples that we'll be taking up. By the way, yes. How do you find out the LCM of Two fractions. LCM of two fractions are found out by using this formula LCM of their numerators by SCF of their denominators. So, when you are finding uh, LCM of two fractions, you take the LCM of the numerators, okay, provided they are in the very simplest forms, and divide by the SCF of the denominators, okay, SCF of QNS. Okay. Now, let me take another example. So one example was this. Okay, another example was this. Let me take this question. Let me take this question. What do you think is the period of, what do you think is the period of tan x plus fractional part of x? What is the period of tan x plus fractional part of x? What is what is the response? Please put your response in the chat box. What is the period of tan x plus fractional part of x? Nobody is answering. I'm expecting actually. Yeah. Okay. So Radeep has given a response. What about others?
no solution okay now what many people think okay this has this is periodic with pi this is periodic with one that we have seen the list of uh, periodic functions and there we had discussed that gif function x minus gif function which is your fraction part function is periodic with period of one now many people make this wonderful statement that lcm of pi and one is pi this is absolutely blunder you know why this particular uh, mistake is being made by students because they think lcm is just the product no if you see the definition of lcm is the lowest common multiple the word multiple means integral multiple that means you are trying to claim that if pi is an lcm of 1 that means pi could be obtained by multiplying 1 with an integer can you tell me which integer is such that you can multiply with 1 to get a pi right such integer and ruchir singh th thinks that pi is 22 by 7 <laughs> ruchir 22 by 7 is just an approximation to pi pi cannot be expressed as a fraction okay so pi cannot be expressed as a fraction it cannot be expressed as a p by q form because it's an irrational number and 22 by 7 is an approximation to pi in fact there were there are better approximations to it <laughs> okay if you see the uh, evolution of how we came up to 22 by 7 you realize that in past lot of approximations have been made for pi yes the answer is you cannot find an lcm of pi and 1 you cannot find an lcm of to be very specific you cannot find an lcm of a rational number and an irrational number a rational number and irrational number lcm does not exist cannot be found out okay so in such cases what we have to claim this function is non periodic we have to say this function is non periodic in that case non periodic got the point okay so let me begin with some questions let me begin with some questions Uh, acha uh, i'm not done with my properties but uh, i'll come back to questions in some time next property is next property is if i think property number i i've lost track of the property number was it property number 3 or 4 Three, three. Okay. If G is periodic, if G is periodic, okay. Then, what can you comment about F O G? Now, F may or may not be periodic. Then, what can you comment about F O G? Will it be periodic? First question: Will it be periodic? Yes, sir. Okay, so you all agree that F O G will also be periodic. Wait, so both F and O, oh, yeah. No, yeah. F. I am not saying F is periodic. F may or may not be periodic. Okay. Now, if G is periodic with a period of t, then what can we comment about the period of F O G? T only. <coughs> t only. Okay. anybody else yes sir it's p p only okay now the answer is it may not have a period of t okay 
Now, I'll give you an example. If let's say f itself is a periodic function, let's say I take cos of sin x. Okay. Now, if this is your function f o g, then sin x has a period of 2 pi. We all know that. Correct. But f o g has a period of pi. Would you like to test it out? Okay. So just change your x with x plus pi. See what will happen. It becomes cos of minus sin x. I hope you know sin x plus pi is minus sin x. And cos of minus sin x is as good as cos of sin x because cos doesn't care about the negativity of its argument. Right? So you started with a function and you came back to the same value after a jump of pi. Correct? So please make a note of this. This is a direct theory, theory based question which Jay can ask you and people will say, you know, same is same as period of t. No, it need not have the same period as t. But yes, you can find hundreds of examples where it will have the same period as t. For example, e to the power sin x. Right? So if you have e to the power sin x as your composite function, then yes, it will have the same period as the period of sin x, which is 2 pi. It is because this function e to the power x itself doesn't is not periodic. Okay, so it follows what the input function period is because it, it cannot dictate its own periodic uh, period, uh, periodicity to the um, uh, you know, total function. Okay, so e to the power sin x follows the same period as what sin x period is. Got the point? So here we need to be careful. So this is a stage where we need to be careful. Okay. <clears throat> Next is a very simple and trivial property. A continuous periodic function is always bounded. A continuous periodic function. Periodic function is always bounded. Please don't say a periodic function is always bounded. Then tan x will come out as a classic example to violate that. Yes, yeah, sir. Will it be periodic with LCM? Uh, LCM. See, again, cos x has a period of 2 pi. Sin x has a period of 2 pi. So cos of sin x has a period of pi. 2 pi, 2 pi period should be 2 pi only, no? But it is not working in this case. Okay. 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 All right. So I think we have we have done uh, enough properties. Time to implement it in solving questions. The first question that I would like uh, you all to solve is this: Find the period of the following function. Find the period of the following. Of the following. Uh, let's take the first question as mod sin x plus mod cos x. Done. <laughs> so I'm getting two types of answers. Pi, pi by two. Okay. <laughs> now, if you go by the logic that you had uh, learned, 
little while ago in the property this has a period of pi okay this has a period of pi okay so the game looks very simple uh, when you say the lcm would be pi only but let me tell you this answer is wrong actually the period is actually the period is pi by 2 you know why it happened it is because see there exists a number lesser than pi for which the function is repeating itself now why there why there exists a, a value k lesser than pi for which this function repeats itself is because these functions are interchangeable so when your functions are interchangeable now why why we say why we say a uh, period is pi in or why we say the period is the lcm okay because we we wait for this function to come back to itself and we wait for this function to come back to itself correct so after pi mod sin x will become mod sin x and after pi mod cos x will become mod cos x but we forget the fact that for a lesser value change mod sin x can become mod cos x and mod cos x can become mod sin x so overall the function will remain the same are you getting my point see when you have sum of two functions when we say the period is the lcm of let's say this period is t1 and this period is t2 and when you say period of the combined function is the lcm of t1 and t2 we actually wait for we actually wait for both the functions to come back to their so after a jump of t in x g of x will become g after a jump of t in x h of x will become h so your entire function will repeat itself but what if there was a shorter value let's say t dash for which this became h of x let's say t dash and this became g of x then also this sum of the two functions will be the same or uh, that means the combination will remain the same okay so we have to look out for us value smaller than that value okay now many people say sir there will be so many values smaller than pi how are we able to find how can we find those values see normally it is seen it is half of that value okay normally again i cannot make a rule out of it so whenever you are getting a period you just try checking for half of its value many times options are also given right so when you see an option lesser than what you are expecting it to be check for that lesser of the option that is the safest way actually okay so this is a big uh, you know eye opener for us the answer here is pi by 2 not pi this is your answer got the got the point here <laughs> okay let's take more questions let's take more questions right. find the periods of the following function if periodic let us do all of them let us do all of them let's start with a i would like you to give me the answer for a Okay, so we have three functions involved here. 
e to the power you can you can treat it as ln only so it is just sin x i believe sin x tan cube x and minus cosec of 3x minus 5 so good uh so here so like will f of x not be defined for sin x between pi and 2 pi because then log sin x is not defined so what so so like so undefined functions uh when the function is missing at a point can't it be periodic yes yeah, so, no i just wanted to ask if you just like when we take it we don't just take sin x right we take sin x from uh Ah, it's, an, it's an identical function. It's not an equal function. That's a very good thing that you have pointed out. Uh, there is something called identical function and equal function. Identical function, they may not have the same domain. But ultimately on simplification, they become the same. A classic example of this is 2 log x and log x square. Right? They're identical functions. I should not write equal to in between. They're identical functions actually. What makes them identical is because, see, ultimately you'll say this will give you this, but no, this function will work for all real values except zero. But this function will only be defined for x greater than zero. So they have different domain. Okay. So these two functions are identical, but not equal. They are identical, but not equal, but not equal. Equal function should be having the same domain as well. Are you getting my point? For example, sine square x plus cos square x. This is equal to 1. This, this, these two functions are equal. Okay. But, but sec square x minus tan square x is identical to 1. Because this will remain 1 for all values of 1, uh, all values of x. Okay. So if I call this as a function, let's say f of x. And I call this as a function g of x. f of x will remain 1 even if your x is any real values. But here we cannot feed multiples or multiples of pi by 2. Are you getting this? So they don't have the same domain. So they are identical, but they are not equal. Are you getting my point? But for the purpose of evaluating your uh, uh, this thing, period of the function, you can treat identical functions to be the same. Okay. Anyways, I mean, even if you don't treat it the same, you'll still conclude that this period is 2 pi. Correct. So period of period of e to the power ln sin x is 2 pi. Tan cube x period is, I hope you understand when I write an arrow like this. So I think we are talking about period. So you can easily note that I'm, I'm basically referring to their period. Cosec 3x minus 5 period is 2 pi by 3. Now, I'm sure there is no intra simplification happening between them. And even if it happens, it doesn't lead to the change of period. Okay. So the period of the combination would be the period of the combination would be the LCM of LCM of these three guys. 2 pi by 1, pi by 1, 2 pi by 3. So LCM of fractions is LCM of its numerators, which is 2 pi pi 2 pi by SCF of by SCF of 1 1 3. So that is actually 2 pi by 1 only. So answer is 2 pi for the first one. So option, sorry, uh, question number A, answer is 2 pi. Next, uh, B. B. What is the answer for B? X minus GIF of X minus B. Even though it is not written. Oh, no, no. It is written. T treat uh, square brackets as the greatest integer function. Right. The answer for B is going to be 1. Because you can write this as you can write this as fraction part of x minus b minus b. Sorry, plus b. Yes or no? Okay. So 
adding something to a function or subtracting something from the x doesn't change the period so it will have the same period as it will have the same period as the fractional part of x which is actually 1 which is actually 1 so for b part answer is 1 okay c okay vikas okay chatanya so it is called up just for a second just for a second okay yes yeah this part okay yes, param thank you sir thank you sir mhm mm the chair okay the answer to part c let's discuss it see uh, first of all let's look at the numerator function numerator function uh, let me write it by different name numerator function nx is made up of mod of sin x plus cos x okay i uh, remember you can write it as a root 2 mod sin x plus 5 by 4 okay now this will have the same period as mod of sin x because remember multiplying anything to the function or taking a plus or a minus anything with the input x doesn't change the period so it will have the same period as same period as mod of sin x which is going to be pi okay denominator function we just now saw i think the previous example itself we saw that its period was pi by 2 This period is pi by two, so your answer will be LCM of pi and pi by two, which, if I am not mistaken, is pi. But again, you are dealing here with functions which are interchangeable, so it is always advisable to check at pi by two. So just replace your x with x plus pi by two and see whether you are getting the function back. Uh, when you do that, I, I believe that sin x will become cos x, but cos x will become a minus sin x. correct nothing will happen to the denominator so if the numerator will become uh, sin x minus cos x in that case which no longer remains the same so yes you will stick to this answer the answer is actually pi right so better be safe better be safe okay so there is a high probability that if there are interchangeable functions uh, your your period may be reduced to half so do a quick check it doesn't harm anybody to do a quick check cool any questions any concerns okay let's uh, let's look at the d part d part okay param vikas very good ओके चैतन्य ओके राजदीप माहित रुचिर
Okay, here. Shall sure. we'll see it? We'll see. Very good. I'm I am very glad to see responses coming from every uh, everywhere. See, uh, when you have tan pi by two GIF of x, okay, and you want to find its period. So let's say the period is t. Okay, let the period be, let the period be t. Okay. So uh, tan pi by two GIF of x plus t is giving you tan. Achha, by the way, this is some angle. Okay. So don't forget it is some angle. So it is giving you something like this. Correct. Yeah. So one tan is equated to the other tan. So how are their angles related? So you'll say, sir, obviously we have seen this in our last year trigonometric equations chapter that your angle would be n pi plus one of them, right? So they will be what happened to my n. Okay, so there will be something like this. Okay. Now, if you see it very closely, you would realize that X has come out of the GIF, not come out, it has actually taken the GIF. In fact, T has come out of the GIF. Okay. If T is coming out of the GIF, that means T must be an integer. See, if you observe here, then there has been a split of this term into GIF of X plus something, right? That's why this pi by two GIF of X has made its appearance. And it has also resulted into a multiple of pi. Correct. So that means T must be an integer. Correct. So first thing you would admit that T must be an integer. So those who have written the answer as an irrational number, pi or pi by two or two pi, whatnot, their answer is straight away wrong. Okay. Okay, if this is an integer, that means, of course, I'll get this and I'll get t pi by 2. By the way, I hope everybody knows this property. We had done this in our theory of equations chapter also. So if n is an integer, then this will break up as this, right? So similar thing is happening here also. Okay. Now, what is the least integer you can think for which n pi can be equated to this, where n is an integer, by the way? So you can take n as one. That's the least integer you can think of. Of course, you can't take a minus one because t has to be a positive integer. Remember, t has to be not only an integer, but it has to be a positive integer because period is always known to be a positive real quantity. Okay. So the smallest value that I can think of for n is one. And hence, I can think of a smallest value of t as a two because one pi is equal to t pi by 2. So t has to be a 2. So period for this function will be 2. It's not a, that straightforward also. <laughs> okay, it's not that straightforward also. So the answer for this question is 2. So could, could you show the question again? I think I... Yeah, why not? So I, I thought it was tan pi by 2x into mod f, into that fractional x. Mm -hmm. Not fraction, it's GIF. Yeah, GIF. Yeah. Okay. Let's take more questions. Let's take more questions. It is yeah. an easy. Uh, sorry. So I have a doubt. Yes, yes, please ask. So in the last one, like if uh, the if we get X as like some even like two point something or four point something. Mm -hmm. The thing comes out to be like zero zero and at uh, odd numbers like one point something, three point something, it won't be there. So shouldn't like it'll be like a dash dash dash. So shouldn't that be like constant kind of if there is a see uh, the best way to justify it, what does the graph say? Okay, of course you will not get a chance to plot a graph in your examination hall. Okay, so let's say I want to check pi by 2 or pi times floor floor x divided by 2. Why does I 
and of floor X okay so let's say this value that you have got here the next value will come over here and that is at a gap of 2 let me just draw x equal to 2 yeah right so do you see this this value here this value here is repeating again at this point okay similarly this value will repeat again at a jump of 2 from here so this jump will be a jump of 2 yeah okay now, now what was your argument i would like to hear from you Sir, but like many points have the same because every time it's zero the value huh yeah every Wait. time it's not zero every time it's not zero it's zero for a certain value of x right yes sir zero then not defined then zero yeah so. basically you have to see the trend over here you have to see the trend in fact there is a trend in the gap also so what is the period that it is trying to exhibit? Are you getting my point? Two. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, this is an easy question. I think all of you should be able to answer in this case. The answer is it is not periodic. Yes. We had already discussed a case like this. This is a non-periodic function. Because sin x has a period of 2 pi and fraction part has a period of uh, 1. So there cannot be an LCM found out between an irrational number and a rational number. Okay. Good. Next question. In fact, I'll put it over here itself. Find the period of cos of cos x plus cos of sin x. Okay, because yes, yes, there are, there are some instances where you'll see a non-periodic functions graph looking like very periodic, but they are not. Their pattern will keep on diminishing or changing after a certain time. Very good. So Ruchir Hia has already given the answer. Okay, see, the best way here would be, let's say I take a value zero. Right? Now I want to see when does this value repeat again? Okay. So what is the smallest value of t for which it repeats? See, th these are different, different tricks that you can use. So at zero, you know, its value is going to be one plus one. That is two. And when you put ft, it becomes cos of cos t plus cos of sin t. Right? So when do you think it becomes a 2 again? Of course, when t is... t is... It's not 2, right? It's... it's, it's uh, it'll one be cos 1 plus 1. one. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah. Cos 1 plus 1. My bad. Cos 1 plus 1. Yeah. When, when do you think it will repeat its value again? Cos 1, uh, cos 1. I think pi by 2 here, if I put it, will become cos 1. And pi by 2 here, if I put it, becomes cos of 0, which is 1. Correct? So now it is interchangeable. So you have to be careful. So I think the smallest value that you can, uh, you know, half for the period is pi by 2. So that becomes the fundamental period for this. So pi by 2 is the one which is going to give you a same result back. 
So pi by two is your answer. Got it? Okay. Let's take few more examples. <clears throat> there is a continuous even periodic function. So there is a continuous even periodic function. There is a continuous even periodic function with a period of eight. With a period of eight. Okay. Such that, such that F zero is zero. F one is minus two. F three is two. F four is three. Okay. Then find the value of then the value of this function tan inverse of tan of f minus five f twenty. plus cos inverse of f minus 10 f 17 okay so please watch out the brackets carefully is option a 2 pi minus 3 3 minus 2 pi, 2 pi plus 3, 3 minus pi. So where does cos inverse end? There's a bracket missing. Ah, good point. You must be a computer science student. No, sir, I'm a bio student. <laughs> Normally, computer science students have these parentheses check. <laughs> Syntax error. <laughs> yeah, you are correct. There was a <clears throat> bracket missing from my side from here. <clears throat> Good observation, Nazdeep. Should I put the poll on? Yes, sir. Yeah. It's on now. So don't we need f of six for this question? Mm, the question doesn't provide that. No, question doesn't provide that. F20. 20 can be obtained from 4 minus 10. <clears throat> no, no. F6 is not required. You can manage with this only. Yes, sir. I think you're ignoring the fact that it's an even function. I think that, yeah, no, that's visible. Very clearly visible. It's an even function. Don't, mo it's periodic, that's fine. But it's even also.
So it's a mix of ITF, it's a mix of even concept, it's a made of mix of periodicity. So three concepts are involved. Three people have responded so far out of 24 of you. It's already going to be two minutes. Okay, uh, last 15 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Okay. So let me end the poll. Very few people have voted so far. And those who want to vote, please do so very quickly, quickly. Okay. Some of you don't want to vote at all. Very mixed response. Almost equal amount of votes have been given to B, C and D. Okay. Let's discuss. So first of all, we need to take care of the part which is within it. F of minus 5 and F of 3 would be the same. So this will be 2. Sir? Yes, sir. So isn't there some value missing from here? We need some value. We need some value. Okay, let's check. F20 will be same as F4. Why? So you, periodic yeah. of 8. Periodic with 8. So if you add a 16... That should give you the same value back. Now, f of minus 10. f minus 10 is same as f minus 2. And f minus 2 is same as f of 2. Because it's an even function. No, but we don't have f of 2. Oh, ho, ho, ho. f2 was given. f2 was actually 1. It's so f23, right? Sorry? So F20 would be 3, right? F20 would be same as F4. Oh, yeah, it will be 3. Yeah, sorry, my bad. Uh, F2 was F2 was given in the question. I think I lost that information. F2 was 1. Okay. So, cos inverse 1. Fine. Sorry about that, but it's fine. Even if you have not uh, got it, my mistake. And cos 17 is same as F, uh, sorry, F 17 is same as F 1. So which is minus 2. So basically you'll realize this becomes a 0. You'll realize you're finding tan inverse of tan 3. If you recall the graph of tan inverse tan theta, this is the graph of tan inverse tan theta, right? Okay, this is your pi value. 3 is very close to pi. That means you are almost here. So you need to seek the equation of this part of the line. This part. Whose equation is y is equal to x minus pi. So your answer for this will be 3 minus pi. Which is option D. Okay, I'm sure you would have done this question, but I think because of that loss of information, you could not do it. All right.
what is the fundamental period of this function sin x plus sin 3x upon cos x plus cos 3x i don't want to give you the options because if i give you the options everybody will get it right Okay, Rahul. Oh, here yeah, I just saw your message. I should have seen it before. <laughs> This is a very interesting question. Well, if I give the options, so most of you, I'm sure, would mark a wrong option. Okay, let me give you an option. Pi by two, pi, two pi, three pi. Question is, what is the fundamental period? Not the period, fundamental period. let me see on the poll let me see your poll results fundamental period not not the period only fundamental periods least t value for which the function repeats itself <laughs> that's the trick vikas that's the trick actually okay 11 of you have voted i'll i'll close the poll in exactly 45 seconds from now Five, four, three, two, one, go. Okay. And of course, surprisingly, yes, the answer that you people have given is correct. Now, see what is the trick here. Answer is option B. Now, see what happened is many of us obviously you would try to apply simplification on this. Okay, we can do that. So, if you apply your transformation formula, the numerator will become two sine two x cos x. Denominator will become two cos two x cos x. 
it actually give you tan 2x it actually gives you tan 2x right now now looking at tan 2x people comment that the period is going to be period is going to be pi by 2 because tan x is having a period of pi so tan 2x should have a period of pi by 2 and they also see that it is the least of these numbers so they mark option a but let me tell you this this is not right why because it violates one of the conditions of periodicity if you see f0 will be defined f0 will be 0 check it out correct so f pi by 2 should also give me 0 right but it is not because f pi by 2 will give you uh, 0 by undefined i mean denominator will become 0 there Are you getting my point? Okay. Even when you put x as x plus pi by 2, you would realize that the function will change its structure. So pi by 2 cannot be your answer. Even though it appears from this that pi by 2 would be your answer. Are you getting my point? So in this case, we'll check for the higher values. We'll check for pi. Of course, sine x plus pi will give you minus sine x. Sine 3x plus 3 pi, that will also give you minus this thing. This will also give you minus. This will also, so your function will repeat itself. So pi would be the answer in this case. But had I not given you the options, I'm sure most of you would have gone for pi by 2. Okay. So this is undefined in this case. Just a second, guys. Is that fine? Any questions? Any questions in this? So, what if you take like, uh, like in not using transformation, if you just take the individual periods of each of the functions, then you'll get two pi. Yeah, that's it. Ha, so that is that is not the least period. That's what happens. No, see, if you go by that regular property, you'll always get you know higher versions of the answer. Basically, they try to see when does this function repeat itself, when does sine 3x function repeat itself like that. But there could be an internal changing of these functions. Sine function, cos function and all of them are interchangeable. Okay. Yes. So in that case, we cannot claim 2 pi to be your answer. We have to, we have to see for a lower value. Preferably check at all half the intervals. Okay. Try this one. See, it's an easy concept, but many people make mistakes. If there is an option, life is very, very easy in case of periodic functions. But if they don't give you options, that means they make it as a, uh, you can say, integer type question, then probably you will feel the pain. Okay. A signal function of GIF of X plus GIF of minus X. Okay. What is the fundamental period for this function? Okay. The fundamental or just period of the function. Fundamental period of the function. Okay, Richard.
Sir, did you start a poll? No, not yet. I'll start now. Okay, last 30 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Okay, most of you have voted. Uh, maximum people have said A and D. Either one or doesn't exist. Okay, good. See, we have all seen this in our uh, theory of equations chapter that negative GIF, a negative of X GIF is negative GIF of X, or you can say negative X if X is an integer. Okay. And it is minus one minus this if X is not an integer. Correct. Okay. So now with this function, I'll define my function in two ways. If X is an integer, they both will cancel each other out and you'll get signum zero. Signum zero is zero. Okay. And when X is not an integer, you will be left with signum minus one. Signum minus one is minus one. Correct. Now, just a look at the graph of this function tells you that at every integer, it will be zero. Then it will be at minus one. Again, next integer will be zero. Then again, it will be at minus one. Next integer will be zero. Again, it will be minus one. So this is the trend of the graph. This is the trend of the graph. Okay. If you look at this graph, what is the periodicity of this function? Anybody can say it. its periodicity will be one. Okay. So answer is option A. Again, remember the definition. It is the value of T. It is the value of the T for which the function will repeat itself for all X in the domain of the function. For all X in the domain of the function. Okay. So here the deciding, uh, the deciding factors are the values of X, which are at the integer points. So you're, you're, you're getting this point back again after a jump of one. Are you getting my point? These are not the deciding points. Of course, they, they will also repeat itself, but out of the two, the decision maker is the integer point because they should repeat themselves also. Everybody should be happy. It is not only about checking one or two points. Got the point here? So the answer here will be option A, that is one.
Good enough? Any questions here? Okay. We'll take a few more questions and then we'll move on to uh, the concept of functional equations. <sighs> a and B are natural numbers and and this function sine of under root a square minus 3x plus cos of under root b square plus 7x is periodic with a finite fundamental period. Needless to say that it's just periodic. Okay. Then period of f of x is option A pi 2 pi 2 pi times under root a square minus 3 plus under root b square plus 7 pi under root a square minus 3 plus under root b square plus 7. Pole is on. Uh, this x is outside the bracket, okay? uh, outside the under root, okay? So don't treat x to be within. So x is outside. There is somebody who is in a very hurry to answer. Okay, last 15 seconds, please vote.
okay five four three two one go okay all right mix response again uh, none of you have gone for option a it's either b c or d almost equal responses have gone to but most people have voted for c okay let's check see if you realize that this function is periodic okay now normally the period of this function is 2 pi by under root of a square minus 3 and the period of this function is 2 pi by under root of b square plus 7 correct now there is an lcm existing for these guys there is an lcm existing for this guys okay can i say for an lcm to exist for this guys and of course a and b are natural numbers these two must be such that there is an integer coming out from there can i say that yes sir correct if that is an integer then a square minus 3 must be a perfect square okay and same goes with b square plus 7 now the only possibility when a square minus 3 is a perfect square is when a value is 2 and b value is 3. There is no other value for which a square minus 3, a being natural number and b also being natural number gives you a perfect square. Okay. Yes or no? Yes sir. Correct. Yes sir. So A has to be uh, 2 and B has to be 3. That means these values have to be 2 pi and 2 pi by 3. What is the LCM of 2 pi and 2 pi by 3? LCM of 2 pi and 2 pi by 3 is 2 pi. So it's 2 pi by 2, but it's still the same. Sorry? 2 pi divided by... Oh, yeah, no. Sorry. Yeah. That. yeah. So your answer is option number B. I think... Uh, in the poll, yeah, B got second highest vote. Most of you went for option C. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, this thing. Because you can do that scamming also. Okay, one last question we'll take and then we'll uh, close this idea of periodic functions. <laughs> One I wanted to take involving functional equation like this. If f of x is such a function which satisfies this functional equation f of x plus f of x plus 4 is equal to f of x plus 2 plus f of x plus 6 for all x, prove that f of x is periodic and find its period. This period need not be the fundamental period.
ओके परम ओके रुचिर गुड ट्राई ओके कीर्तन ओके राहुल Okay, last fifteen seconds, and then we'll discuss it. <clears throat> Very good. All right, so let's stop it. Let's discuss. I think I've seen uh, responses from mo most of you. Some of you have said two. Some of you have said eight. Okay. now if you're saying f of 2 if you're saying 2 is the period that means you are trying to claim f of x is equal to this correct and you're trying to claim and you're trying to claim that f of x plus 4 will be equal to f of x plus 2 okay what is the uh, you know evidence in the question which says that or for that matter this will become x plus 6 how are you sure that this function becomes this and this only becomes this it there could not be there is no evidence like that just because the sum of these two is equal to sum of these two we cannot make do a one on one mapping okay so saying two would be a risky game okay so what is the right way to do this question let's check this out sorry let's check this out we already have a functional equation which is f of x plus f of x plus 4 is equal to f of x plus 2 plus f of x plus 6 replace your f of x or replace your x with x plus 2 that will give you f of x plus 2 plus f of x plus 6 is equal to f of x plus 4 plus f of x plus 8 now add these two 
if you add these two you would realize this will get cancelled with this this will get cancelled with this this will get cancelled with this and one solid proof that we have over here is that f of x plus 8 is equal to f of x that means for sure it will have a period of 8 but period of 2 cannot be confirmed 8 is definitely a period because i am getting f of x is equal to f of x plus 8 now there may be a lesser period but for that we do not have any confirmation so if you can show that there is a value lesser than 8 for which the function f of x will repeat itself then probably we can accept that as the period or we can we can accept that as a fundamental period but the question is not fundamental period the question is actually a period okay so 2 cannot be claimed as a period because there is no evidence that f of x is equal to f of x plus 2 but 8 has an evidence which you can see here so 8 can be claimed as a period are you getting my point here yes sir okay fine so i think we have taken enough questions uh, on uh, uh, period so what we'll do is